Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lee if you're new here and in today's video I am unboxing the new MacBook Pro 13 inch 2020. Let me tell you guys why I even decided to get this. My old MacBook, MacBook 2012, just recently deleted all my files for the second time in the last two months. Today I decided to walk into the Apple store and purchase the new MacBook Pro. Now in today's video I will be talking to you guys a little bit about this MacBook Pro as well as comparing it. Also letting you guys know how you guys can trade in your old devices with Apple to get money back. Dear Lord, forgive me and my bank account. I didn't mean to spend so much money in less than 24 hours. So with this MacBook Pro, I decided to get it in the color Space Gray. Um, there's only two colors that you can actually get this MacBook Pro in. You can get it in the silver, which is um, the color that I previously had, and sort of this like, darker gray color. So I'm going to go ahead and start to open it. There's this little flap here that you guys can open it. Ooh, that is so satisfying. <laughs> I feel like my old Mac, like it worked really well until I decided to start a YouTube channel. I was constantly editing videos, opening up browsers, you know, listening to music, doing so many things at once. So this MacBook is a higher processor than my 2012 one, of course. And one thing I really do enjoy is being able to do multiple things at once. Now, this MacBook Pro is a 13-inch LED backlit display. Um, 1.4 quad core Intel with a higher turbo speed so um, what that means is that it's a little bit faster programming than of course my older Mac um, it does have 8 gigabytes of memory and 512 gigabytes of storage so I got it like I said in the color space gray so it comes with this little pamphlet that honestly nobody really reads but I feel like it's handy you know always keep it around if you do have any questions you can always go to this first charging port and um, pretty much a battery pack this battery pack is similar to my old MacBook Pro which is really good but it doesn't really make a difference because I actually can't even use my old charger just in case this one decides to kind of just do its thing and break on me or something like that this is one thing I do hate about Apple is the fact that every time they upgrade, they literally upgrade. Just end up not even being able to use it anymore. So um, there is a difference between this, of course, and the older MacBook Pros. There was more of like that socket connecting one, um, whereas this one's more of just like a regular C charger. Um, but one thing I can definitely say is that it's so much lighter and easier to carry. Where was this when I was in college and high and, and university? So initially I can already tell that it's so much lighter than my old 2012 MacBook. So this reminds me of like the air. It just feels so light. Um, actually it looks like it could be the air. It's a little bit thinner than my old MacBook as well. There's less ports than my previous MacBook. Only two ports here that you can, of course, charge your Mac. My 2012 MacBook Pro had a lot more ports than this current one does. And as you guys can see, it's already starting to turn on. To use English as the main oh. language, press the return key. Okay, Siri is already ready to chat. So one thing being the keypad. The keypad does look a little bit wider than my previous Mac, as you guys can see. There's a lot more room and I can't really tell if that was necessary. So already when I'm pressing the keyboard, it just feels like I don't have to press down as hard as I used to with my old Mac 2012. I feel like even with the keypad um, or the mouse track, it just feels like I'm, I don't really need to press down as hard. So you have the brightness that is here. You also have the keypad um, brightness. You have the sound so you can go ahead and mute that. You can turn it up, turn it down, and these are already on once I'm starting the computer. There seems to also be sort of like more icons that are not shown. Another thing I did want to point out is that these speaker jacks have also changed. So if you guys see here, the speakers are actually um, along the sides of the keyboard rather than just in this little crease here, which is one thing that also has changed with the Mac. So let's go ahead and start getting Siri. Hey Siri. Oh shit, my phone started to go off. <laughs> hey Siri, what does the rest of my day look like? <laughs> Watching Netflix. <laughs> so now we're going to start to enable Touch ID. I'm going to go ahead with the dark mode to choose my look. And let's just see what this looks like. True tone, okay. 
So now that my Mac is setting up, let's get right into the next thing. So everything seems to be pretty much the same here. Now one thing I did want to point out is, as you guys remember, when I was initially logging in and setting up my Mac, all of these icons were lighting up. Now these ones went dark and now these ones are lighting up. So in this one here, I just want to go through it and show you guys pretty much what this looks like. It's asking me if I want to allow calendar to use my current location or don't allow. This same question is actually popping up on this little touch screen here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press okay and see what that does. Now this goes black, but what I originally wanted to talk about is pretty much the new icons that are on the side here. So it seems like I could show a longer bar. I could pretty much do everything that was just like the last one. I have the play button here, I have the sound that I can adjust, and this just seems like the home button. I hope I didn't turn the computer off. Oh yeah, that just looks like the home button, I think. Now I just realized that Siri is actually writing out everything that I am saying. If you guys see here, um, she's just typing out everything I'm saying, which is a little bit scary, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn her off. <laughs> So overall, based on like this initial reaction, I actually can give this laptop like a 10 out of 10. I love purchasing things and there is a difference and I know that sounds contradicting from based on what I just said, but I do just like the fact that it's just, it's very different. It just makes it exciting to kind of just press new buttons and to do more things on it and just pretty much see what the hell it does. With being a YouTuber, it makes more sense to actually have more storage because I am saving everything, but I do have an external hard drive that I am going to start transferring all my files in just so my MacBook does not end up like my 2012 MacBook and I can just go at least a couple years with this one. Carrying this around in college and university definitely did take a toll on my back. Like, I just felt like this MacBook was just overall just so heavy um but eventually you start to get used to it but this new version of this macbook definitely is way lighter and i feel like it's just more accessible and easier to carry so if you are a student i definitely would recommend getting this macbook just because of that also another big question i feel like a lot of people were asking and one of my questions were if there was a headphone jack so there is a headphone jack actually on the right side of the um Pro. It just makes things that are were bought previously before newer versions a little bit harder because you can't use it on old, newer versions. I did do a lot of research. Now I am not a, a MacBook guru or a tech savvy kind of girl, but MacBook Pro, especially for editing and uploading documents and um, Microsoft and you know for school and stuff like that, the MacBook Pro is most likely the better bet when it comes to something that you need that's a little bit more hands-on. But one thing I heard that the Air lacks is a faster processing speed. I can't really guarantee that with you guys because um, I've never actually had an Air. But I just feel like I'd rather stick with the Pros when it comes to MacBooks. My Mac is all set up and we have gone through a couple of things. I did want to talk to you guys about trading your Mac. Now this is the first time that I have traded any device with Apple. And um, I did have a lot of questions before trading, like how much money can I actually make from this item and does it really matter if it's like scratched and dent and all that. So if you are somebody who has some of these questions about trading in your devices with Apple, then keep on watching. So like I said already, I did have a 2012 MacBook Pro um, and I decided to trade it in today and the best way that I did that was looking at how much money I can make off the product. So I did do a lot of reading and on the Apple side, it does tell you from their iPhones to their iPads to their MacBooks, how much money you can potentially make. Now I doubt Apple would wanna give away so much money. So I feel like they're always gonna give you like the minimum, but with my MacBook Pro 2012, no dents, no scratches, no cracked screens, um, I received $100 for that. Now to me that probably is a really shitty price, but I just felt like with what I have already and with me losing my items twice because of the hard drive, I just felt like I don't want to sell somebody this if I know that it's probably not going to work and they're probably going to serve me in the next couple of weeks and sue me. I just felt like it just made more sense to just 
give away my MacBook as fast as possible and just make money from it. So I did do the quote online and they asked me some questions along the lines of when did you get it? What is the condition? Are you giving your MacBook charger along with the MacBook? Um, is there any dent scratches? Is the battery swelling? And um, I pretty much said like no, 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 no. I wrote no to everything because I just felt truly into my heart like this actually still is a really good condition MacBook. It just needs to get a new hardware drive. And so my quote was $100. Earlier, I actually walked into the Apple store today. So I was able to talk to somebody before um, doing my trade. Now, the same questions were asked to me in person and the same quote was given to me of $100. Now, I don't really know if you can negotiate prices or anything like that, but I just felt like, you know what? I anticipated $100. I will go with $100 and I was able to trade my MacBook Pro. Now, if you did not have the chance to trade in your MacBook Pro in person, another option is that they actually send you a box where you can place your MacBook in the box and they will send you a free shipping label and they will give you a quote once the item has shipped to them. I had a lot of questions about this because I just felt like, well, if they get it and the quote doesn't meet my expectations, do they keep it? because it's still a functioning MacBook and I don't want you guys to just have my free MacBook just like that. So are you guys gonna send it back to me? And the answer was yes. So if you don't like the quote, they will send it back to you. Um, or you have the option to just give it in for free. That's your choice. If you just say like, you know what, I'm wiping my hands clean of this MacBook. It did me dirty for the last couple of weeks. Get rid of it, you know? So with that being said, you do have two options. I'm not quite sure if the online version of sending in the box is just because of coronavirus. I have heard a lot of people do this in the past. So you do have two options um, if you do want to use your trade-in. The one thing about the trade-in that I feel like was a disappointment, I mean like when you buy something from this, you, you get it returned based on the same card that you used. Yeah, I thought that and that's actually very false. I ended up getting an Apple gift card, which was a disappointment. Because I don't buy Apple products as frequently as most people. I don't buy apps. Everything I buy is, well, everything I get is free. You know, Instagram's free, Facebook's free, Twitter's free, Snapchat's free. So it's like, what am I going to do with a $100 Apple gift card? One thing is that it doesn't expire. So for those who do have Apple gift cards, the one thing that's really good is that it doesn't expire. But what are you going to do with the Apple gift card? So I kind of wish that I did get the money back onto my credit card, which is how I paid. That is all for my new MacBook Pro 2020. I'm so excited to finally start editing and just getting into the things that I want to do without having to wait two minutes for a browser to upload. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Do not forget to thumbs up if you like videos like these and I'll see you guys in the next video.